So what is the third layer of the onion then? Um, so you need to actually peel it um, layers by layers to really see what's inside. So fundamentally, um, what's behind all this is that um, small farmers, they are unable to compete with agri-industry. Why are they volatile market prices? Because if you, know, you do not provide any kind of um, protective measures to local farm products, they have to compete with others who have big productivity. Um, those agri-industry may be from the other countries, from India, from US. Those countries might have subsidized their agriculture industry. So as a result, you are not able to compete with them. Um, the prices will be so low, you will not be able to earn a profit as a smallholder farmers uh, compared to the agri industry. And then also, there is um, inappropriate food aid and um, food distribution that actually harms smallholders farmers. Um, I have actually um, given you a class reading on food dumping. Um, but basically, um, um, food aid or food is given in a highly subsidized manner in very low prices to countries. And then as a result, the local farmers cannot compete with this um, free food. Um, there are also many countries with national policies to control food prices to make sure food prices are low enough um, for consumers' consumptions. And they do not provide any kind of productive measures to the food producers. And so what you can see is the rural subsidizing the urban in terms of natural resources, labor and pollution. So um, when you grow um, food in, in the rural areas, it uses up the water, uses up the land, um, uses up the labor power um, in order to supply very cheap food sources to urban people. And then um, they also suffer the pollution, um, for example, um, the pesticides, pollutions, uh, water pollution, land pollution, deteriorating soil quality. And then you have trade policies that encourage cash crop cultivation. So you encourage farmers to earn a profit from their agriculture. So they would grow um, valuable crops as much as possible, possibly using monoculture method rather than mixed culture method, which we, we already know that is unsustainable. Um, farmers themselves do not produce their own food and have to rely on income from the cash crop which is affected by the volatile market prices in order to purchase food for themselves. As we have seen in the case of um, farmer suicides, subsidized agricultural inputs actually create a kind of dependency. Um, they involve you into a debt cycle that you have um, borrow money to get all the agricultural inputs so you must make sure that you have good productivity um, in order to repay the debt and then um, so this cycle will go on again and again and um, farmers become very vulnerable um, if there is one or two times of crop failures they will go into um, high debt and um, a lot of them committed suicides because there's no other way out so i just want to spend a little time talking about what is food dumping so in one of your class reading i actually directed you to a website by globalissues.org and there's a lot of information there quite comprehensive um, information about food dumping but very quickly um, as i already mentioned food dumping is the selling of food in a heavily subsidized manner to other countries usually by countries with big agriculture industry that can afford to export a lot of food and actually for this country it might be easier to sell this food in a very cheap price than to dump them because it costs money to dump food as well so um, you can see that um, this is part of a uh, um, US and European policies. They have been selling a lot of um, food in a heavily subsidized manner to different parts of the world, um, sometimes below market prices and sometimes free as food aid. And this has um, caused a lot of um, problems and contributed to rural poverty in many places. And um, of course, this sometimes affects both importing and exporting countries. Um, so for example, the Mexican government has put over 2 million corn farmers out of business by, imported, by importing heavily subsidized corn from the United States. 
Uh, at the same time, in the 1990s, as Brazil became the world's third largest agricultural exporter, the area planted um, soybeans having grown 37%, but per capita production of rice, a basic staple, fell by 18%. So um, uh, Brazil has cultivated a lot of soybean, um, specifically round, out soy round up soybeans um, by Monsanto, uh, a biotechnological company, and mainly export them to Taiwan, China, um, who needs a lot of um, soybean consumption. And then so um, by diverting all their natural resources, labor and farming um, productivity to soybeans, they have actually reduced um, their own um, productions of um, essential foods such as rice. So um, sometimes it can affect both importing and exporting countries. And in the readings on globalissues.org, they also mentioned about how um, two um, big famine in the history it actually, is actually related to how countries which are already short of food are still exporting food products to other places. So for example, in the 19th century, um, mid 19th century, um, the great Irish potato famines, um, we can see that even though um, the potato productions are, were heavily um, affected by a potato blight, a potato disease, um, the Irish region is still exporting food to England. And so um, that have exacerbated the uh, um, Irish famine and about 1 million people died um, during the famine. And then we have the Bengal famine in 1934. Um, which happens in India, where the colonial British government uh, were still exporting food, even though um, there were food shortages in the area. So food distribution um, is really a problem um, in terms of um, a worldwide hunger problem um, and also uh, rural poverty. So why does rural poverty matter? Of course, we are talking about international development, so all kinds of poverty matter. But rural poverty is integrated with many other issues. Um, for example, it is entangled with environmental issues, biodiversity, agricultural pollution, land and water degradation. And also, um, it is um, directly connected to food, food security and food sovereignty issues, not just of the farmers themselves, but also of uh, the political unit, the country as a whole. So food security can be defined as having reliable access to enough food. So um, for food security to occur, you at least need to um, um, produce um, sufficient food in the country or able to have access to buy um, enough food to feed um, your country and food security is people who produce distribute and consume food should control the mechanism and policies of food production and distribution so we are not seeing the case here for many of the rural farmers um, they lose control totally on um, the policies of food production finding themselves being trapped by very volatile market prices and extremely vulnerable for crop failures um, but also at a country level if you you constantly lack of um, sufficient food to feed your populations. You are forced to um, adjust your um, trade policies or terms of trades um, in order to exchange for important food because food is what you need for survival. Um, so when you need something according to the market principle, um, the person who needs something will pay um, a lot um, in order to gain those things that they need. And also it's related to seed sovereignty. Um, so uh, I already mentioned how um, seed sovereignty actually influenced biodiversity. Um, so seed sovereignty um, refers to farmers' rights to have access to, save, breed, and exchange seeds which are not patented, genetically modified, or not controlled by emerging seed giants such as the Monsanto company. So the problem of using hybrid seeds is uh, the hybrid seeds cannot reproduce itself, so you have to purchase the seeds every year. And also when you grow things with hybrid seeds, it will cross-contaminate with local seeds variety. So in the long term, the local seeds will be not viable as well unless some protective measures or specific food bank, um, which is sometimes expensive, is established to preserve those local seeds um, on purpose. So what you can see here is the more you use hybrid seeds, um, 
the, the more likely that all the seeds diversity will um, slowly disappear. And this is actually not good because um, um, biodiversity and seeds diversity is actually important um, to enhance re resilience to climate change and also to other kind of um, plant diseases. So the more different varieties you have, generally the more resilient your production system would be. That's why you have people promoting agroforestry system or promoting diversifications of um, industry um, to, to maintain the health of an economy. And um, I always like to end with a more um, positive note. Um, so we do have international peasants movement. So La Via Campesina is actually a very famous movement um, um, originating in Latin America. So you can see this is a screenshot of the website. Um, globalizing hope, globalizing the struggle. So it says here, La Via Campesina is an international movement bringing together millions of peasants, small and medium-sized farmers, landless people, rural women and youth, indigenous people, migrants and agricultural workers from around the world. Built on a strong sense of unity, solidarity between this group, it defends peasant agriculture for food sovereignty as a way to promote social justice and dignity and strongly opposes corporate-driven agriculture that destroys social relation and nature and so you can see that the discussion of rural poverty is really closely related to the issues of um, environmental sustainability and climate change um, but then you don't necessarily see this um, as being obvious in the sustainable development goals or even in the major development agenda of um, the development actors today so my question to you, do you see any similarities between urban rural relationship with core peripheral relationships in world system theory? Um, so think about it, um, write it down um, to prepare for your reflection and discussion. And after this, I will direct you to a TED talk on um, um, farming and agriculture in India. And, and that person has kind of um, proposed some very interesting um, solutions such as universal basic incomes on farmers. So um, make sure to watch it and write down some of your thoughts. Okay, thank you very much.